let's discuss the sex addiction cycle. It's really important to understand that sex addiction always comes in cycles. Uh, because if you can understand your cycle, then you can change your life patterns. As you change your life patterns, you're throwing wrenches into the cycle and you disrupt it, which is the whole point of recovery. We're trying to disrupt these you know, inappropriate sexual behaviors. And so identifying the cycle and, and how to interrupt it uh, can be really important. So let's talk about the cycle real quick. There are four stages. The first is preoccupation. The second one is rituals. The third one is acting out. And the fourth one is dealing with the aftermath of your sexual acting out. So let's talk first real quick about preoccupation. So preoccupation just means that you have a preoccupied mind. Your mind has been, um, you know, triggered to start thinking in a sexual way. And for a sex addict, that could be uh, fantasizing. It could be planning the next sexual escapade. It could be trying to stop, you know, the sexual escapade. But any of those could be ways that a sex addict's mind could be pre preoccupied and get them into the sexual cycle, the sex addiction cycle. Stage number two in the sex addiction cycle is rituals. And rituals actually lead into acting out behavior. So let's just connect those two. So 90% of the time, or I should say most of the time, a sex addict's uh, behavior runs in patterns. Um, most of the time, the patterns are, are very, very similar. So if I were to give you an example of someone getting into pornography, pornography the sexual acting out, uh, uh, one might first be at work, uh, second, one might be on a work computer, third, one might be all alone, uh, checking emails. Uh, when checking emails, there might have the, the individual might have a feeling of dread, like not wanting to check emails, not wanting to work. And so they might get distracted on the internet and start uh, what we call surfing the internet without a point, just, just trying to find something to entertain himself. And then all of a sudden he's into pornography and masturbating. That cycle might happen very ritualistically uh, over and over and over and over again. Now, there might be other uh, ritualistic behavior that happens less frequently, but even that behavior would be ritualistic in essence. And so uh, when we know that ritual, then we can put an injunction in and disrupt the cycle. For example, someone who continuously is getting on his computer and watching porn at work might put a filter on his device at work so he can't so readily get to pornography. It'll deter him. After acting out, there is the consequence. And so for a lot of guys who act out, they feel, they feel really guilty and ashamed of their behavior. Um, it's also very ritualistic that they tend to hide it and not tell people about it uh, because of the fear of consequences and most likely the fear of embarrassment. And so there's this negativity that follows uh, sex addiction uh, behaviors. And it's often that negativity uh, that drives a sex addict to want to feel better. And so what they tend to do is they tend to go from feeling guilty and, and ashamed back into the sex, sexual behaviors that they think are going to solve that uh, negativity. And it doesn't. It just keeps perpetuating the cycle over and over and over again.